bandits, guards, kobolds, giants. I get it, but it's all just too bright. I need something dark, something grim for this campaign. But where can I get good source material? The Flesh Eater Courts from Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar has some of the absolute best lore that I've seen for like a grim, dark, and just a brutal vibe. And none display this better than the Flesh Eater Courts. There's been a handful of times where I've really been driven to run a D&D &D 5e campaign that is based around this delusional madness that they bring. So today we're going to show some of the fantastic terrain sets that you get for your faction of the Flesh Eater Courts, along with building up on it, uh, building a expanded throne room, and then how are we going to bring these crazed delusional maniac ghouls into Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I'm going to start this whole piece off, you know, taking a extra chunk of XPS foam that I had from an idea of a town square that just never came to fruition. And this here is the faction terrain for Flesh Eater Courts. This is the Charnel Throne. And there was just a little extra gate that I had from another kit that was just randomly before. And now it's hammer time. We got texture up this XPS foam, break off some bits and really start making it look like it's part of this damage terrain feature and not so much for a town square. Now I'm just going to go in with my fingers, rip off some chunks to really try to get some organic looking shapes of it, kind of get rid of some of those circles that are indented from the hammer. But once we do this, we're going to have some nice elevation changes, some nice breakage. Now we'll skip ahead to when I'm all done with this part. So here we're all finished doing all the damaging and breaking them apart, sizing up the charnel throne on it again when building terrain or making a mini base. This is huge. Constantly resize it, constantly make sure that this thing still matches up. We're going to place that little gate in front, it's going to act as like kind of an altar. And now start taking up these little broken chunks of cork that I've had from another failed project. I've got one or two of those and just start building up layers, building up some cool textures, some nice different elements. Now here's where I'm going to take a moment to talk about the Flesh Eater Courts and a little bit of their lore and how we can use it. So the Eternal Throne here is kind of where the General gives his command and in AOS he can bring on more minions. It's obviously a mechanic that we can bring over really quick and easy in Dungeons and Dragons where just like a legendary action of the Ghoul King to where he can summon another D6 Ghouls to the board, or D20. Now that we're all done with that part, what we're gonna start doing is working with some texture paste. Now one of my pacing videos for a corn unit for Warcry, uh, this I kind of walked through the basic steps of how I created this. If somebody's more interested to see a more in-depth just let me know in the comments and I can do a video on a couple of homemade recipes that you can do. But pretty much this is sand, drywall filler, PVA glue, and a couple other bits and bobs. Let's smear this all across, create some interesting texture and variances, and continue building up. This will also help blend that cork in so you don't just have this drastic jump from the XPS foam to cork. When I was about finished with all that and placing the throne on, I realized it didn't make sense to have the throne recessed. The base of that throne is all broken apart, so I took another bigger chunk of cork, had one that kind of fit to the right size, and broke that one up a little bit, set that in there so the throne will not sit elevated on top of everything else right here. Just thought it made a better look overall. Now here is one of the most important parts of this whole build. 
In order for it to work right and have that same aesthetic, we gotta load this up with every skull that we can. I really, I almost drained my bits box of skulls, bits box of skulls doing this. I'm gonna fill up a lot of the nooks and crannies and honestly, looking at it now, I probably could have put twice as many skulls in this thing and it would have still looked like it could have used another one or two. This is a great feature right now while the texture paste is still wet. It's really gonna stick in there good. It's gonna harden up and those aren't going anywhere. At this point, there really isn't a need to glue them down. But of course, you throw some watered down PVA glue, it's gonna work out fine. This is also gonna add to that thematic like rule playing element as these ghouls are just more cannibalistic humans that are driven mad from this just overwhelming presence of the ghoul king himself they're not demons they're not undead like in DD. it's a very weird but cool grim dark mechanic to where they're just feasting on bone and marrow just thinking that they're royal knights in service of this ghoul that's just himself delusional on the edges of this we need to make some bricks one of the quickest easiest cheapest ways to do it is to take bits of the sprues that we have left over from old models, clean it up, clip off some extra little pieces, make it as smooth as you kind of can to start with. Now take an X-Acto knife and let's give it some texture, make some good deviations, and then snip it down to size. It's gonna work around the base here. This is a lot like the skulls in this aspect where it's it's just a really important part that brings that next level of texture and interest to it. Without these uh, bricks being laid around the edges, it would have it would have looked great, I think, but it would have been a little bit flat and a little bit boring of just being mud and rock. So adding in different sizes, building up a frame, I think this really took this to the next level. I'm pretty proud of the way that these turned out. Uh, in the end, it actually <laughs> ended up being more time consuming than I thought. But, super cool process, way to use up some extra little bits that I had that were just going to go into the trash. Took that outside, I used some of that new Army Painter Hobby Paint, and it primed it up really well. I threw in a little bit more of a brown spray paint to give it a little bit of a light zenithal, and I just threw random colors of washes all over it. Now I'm just doing a heavy overbrush of a black gray by Vallejo. It's uh, kind of bringing it back down to this neutral color. Every now and then you'll catch a glimpse of these other colors shining through it. Now as I finish this up, there's going to be a couple more things that we'll talk about coming up here. A couple more layers that we're going to do with this. But really now we're, we're honing in on the color. Where it's going to differentiate with the darks, the grays, and now we're coming in with a uniform brown from Vallejo as well. In this part here, I'm only going to hit the cork. So I'm only going to hit what's supposed to represent the rock and the broken rubble and debris on this. Just so it gives a little bit of uh, depth perception and difference between this and the mud and dirt below. And now I have a tan earth also by Vallejo that I'm just going to periodically mix up with some screaming skull and just build up these layers of highlights. I'm making sure that I hit the skulls with this so that by the time it's done you have pure screaming skull on the skulls. Pretty fitting if you ask me. Now you can use this terrain feature in a number of different ways. You can set the terminal throne on top of it. You can use it as random scatter terrain in many, many different settings. You can use it in Warcry, Warhammer, and of course, as we're doing now, talking about using it in Dungeons and Dragons. What are some ways that we can use this in the old D&D? Well, you can use the little center there out of that gate as the summoning portal. Maybe this is where ghouls or demons flesh out of, depending on if you want to go with the traditional Dungeons and Dragons ghoul. Maybe that's a gateway down there to some of the Nine Hells or that's a portal set up by Orcus and just demons are flushing out of it and the undead spew from there themselves so it could be a maybe they had to destroy that portal in order to stop the summoning and, and really secure uh, 
the end of this battle. As we take a moment to talk about game mechanics and how would you do these type of ghouls in D&D, there's a couple of different ideas that I've messed around with. I've had periodically a uh, player chosen that just got too close to the king where he has to make a madness check or a will check. You know, something against his constitution or his uh, charisma. And if he overcomes the DC, of course, nothing happens. If he succumbs to the DC, well, maybe he turns on his friends for a turn. Uh, maybe he starts to get driven into the madness. See, these ghouls don't think that they're anything like ghouls. As we mentioned before, they think they're royalty. And they think that the party are the actual beasts, the undead enemy. As the party finally makes its way into the throne room of the Flesh Eater Courts, they face off against an endless horde of ghouls, cannibalistic mortals, driven by the madness of their master. Not just a general, but the abhorrent Ark Regents. Will they now overcome the urge to turn on their friends? Will they keep their peace of mind, sanity, and move forward true with valor and defeat the Flesh Eater Courts. Everyone that stuck around to the end, thank you very much. That really does help out. So if you haven't yet, like, share, subscribe, if you didn't like it, then I'm sorry. So this was a pretty cool video for me. It really took two big passions that I have, AOS and Dungeons and & Dragons, and put them together to see how can we bring the lore from the one and work it into the other one and some of the mechanics. If anybody wants to see something where I dive a little bit deeper into this and give some experience from games that I've run, throw it down in the comments. I'll gladly do a video up on that if that's what people really would like to see. Uh, if you haven't checked me out over on TikTok yet, I post pretty much daily over there. So it's abuchananas underscore Nomeo Dilbo. Maybe that was my first D&D &D character. Maybe it wasn't. And if you're over on Instagram, check me out at abuchananas underscore tabletop. So until the next time, abuchananas.